What's going on, everyone? I'm just an average American here today to react and learn about 10 Canadian inventions. My goodness. Uh, you know, I think in another uh, video that I had reacted to, I learned that Canada might have invented the internet or something. I, for I kind of forget. <laughs> it, it blew my mind too much. But today we have 10 uh, Canadian inventions, so if it's anything close to that, you know, these are probably a big deal, and I'm quite interested to see what sorts of things Canada has pioneered that might have changed the world, or what? I mean, I'm not exactly sure what these inventions are gonna be, but, uh, inventions are always pretty fascinating, because it's typically stuff that Americans and everyone in the world uses, and then you're like, what? That was made in Canada? So, uh, there's probably gonna be a lot of that. So, <laughs> with that being said, uh, let's check it out. Number one, time zones. What? Time zones? This is defi definitely something that affects the entire planet. <laughs> someone invented time zones? I guess someone had to. Time zones were invented by Sir Sanford Fleming. Number two. What? Wow, that was quick. <laughs> Hold on. Time zones? Stir That's all I get, Time huh? zones. T time zones were invented by Sir Sanford Fleming. Sir, Sir Fan Sansford Fleming. I can't even say his name. I suppose this was back... Uh, I don't know when this guy existed. Hold on. Time. Whoop, not yim. Time. Zone. Zone invented. Sir Sanford Fleming developed the system of worldwide time zones that we still use today. Wow. Divided it into 24 time zones, 15 degrees apart by long longitude. That's pretty cool. <laughs> okay. That just went by so quick. I was like, wait, this is, this is a big deal. Number two, the Blackberry. The Blackberry phone? Uh, I think we're getting to the point... What year was this list made? 2017? Okay, five years ago. This is... <laughs> this makes sense. We're not... we're not really talking about Blackberries anymore. Sorry, <laughs> but for their time, you know, uh, cell phones were very much created while I was growing up. Cell phones as we know them. Um, and before the iPhone and other smartphones, the Blackberry was... The Blackberry was it. That was the phone. It was the coolest phone, and all business people liked it a lot, and it had buttons, and uh, it's pretty cool. I admire any businessman, any entrepreneur. I certainly didn't know. I mean, it was the biggest phone company in the world at one point, before Apple, probably. It was invented by Canadian Mike Lazardis. While it might not be the most prevalent smartphone these days, it was yeah. one of the first. Yeah. And people were walking around with their eyes glued to their Blackberries long before they had their eyes glued to their iPhones or their Androids. Yeah, Blackberries were huge. So, I didn't know. I just never really thought about who it was made by. Number three, wheelchair accessible buses. Wheelchair accessible buses. So, Canada didn't invent buses, uh, but they did invent uh, wheelchair accessible buses, which is fantastic, of course, off the bat. Um, I suppose that would honestly take quite a quite a bit of engineering to figure out how you can raise and lower individuals onto it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. The first wheelchair accessible buses. Yeah, look at this thing. That's pretty amazing, honestly, to to create this thing and to have the presence of mind to think about making it. It's very nice, very good thing to make. Were invented by Walker Harris Callow in 1947. Oh, I wouldn't have thought it would have been so long ago. Like, 70 years ago. Wow, that shocks me more than anything. He designed the bus to accommodate veterans who were coming back from the Second World War. Oh, for veterans who may be using a wheelchair. Ah, oh, yes. Uh, very good, very good. A lot of these veterans had injuries that required them to use a wheelchair. Right. Unfortunately, getting onto public transit in a wheelchair wasn't very easy. I'm sure. At least until Walker came along and invented his wheelchair accessible buses. It's yeah, this is just cool. This is like a great invention to help ma mankind, your fellow man. Speaking of wheelchairs, let's move on to number four, the electric wheelchair. The electric wheelchair. 
Really? I mean, this is something that is incredibly important in the modern day. It's helped untold numbers of people find uh, independence and whatnot who need a wheelchair. And uh, you, you can actually activate it electronically instead of pushing it and wheeling it. Yeah. Another thing that's helped so many people, which is great. Canadians really care when it comes to not allowing a disability to become a disadvantage. Yes. And this care was shown by George Klein in 1952 when he invented the electric wheelchair. This is also so great because you know these two inventions were made to help people, which speaks a lot to the Canadian culture, I think. It, they weren't made just to turn a huge profit and make millions of dollars, even if they may have, which is fine. They created it fundamentally with, with a purpose in mind to help people, which is great. Number five, the Canada Arm. The Canada Arm? I don't know what that is. The Canada Arm is a giant robotic arm used on space shuttles. What? Does it grab stuff? Does it take pictures? This is really specific. Uh, we went from a bus to a spaceship. So it's a very... I don't know. It's an attachment for a spaceship? I mean, it's cool. And more recently, it's been used on the International Space Station. As the name implies, the Canada Arm is a Canadian invention. And one of the people who helped this invention come to be was actually my own grandfather, Joseph Lackner. What? Oh, that's pretty cool. Wow, <laughs> to say your grandfather had a part in this. It's also cool that Canada, in general, just has, like, this presence on, like, a bunch of spaceships in the world because it invented this really important device. I'm still not sure what the arm does, though. My grandfather was literally a rocket scientist and worked on yeah. batteries used in space. Yeah. He's been recognized by the Canadian Space Agency, the U.S. Air Force, and NASA. He also received an award from a former Canadian Prime Minister. That's, pre that's pretty darn cool. As a little kid, I always thought it was really strange how he kept batteries in the refrigerator to help them keep their charge. Huh. But... <laughs> oh, it'll really double their lifespan? Wow, I'm learning. Now I'm just learning useful facts. I guess he knew what he was doing. Number six... Hold on. I gotta look up Canada Arm. Canada... Arm. What do you do, Canada Arm? Oh, it's one word. Canada, Canada Arm. Series of robotics arms to deploy, maneuver, and capture payloads. So it very much is like an arm with, that grabs stuff, manipulates stuff, or... That's cool. I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> Six, the snowmobile. The snowmobile? <laughs> wow, a lot, a lot of these have had to do with transport devices, whether that be buses or spaceships or wheelchairs, or a snowmobile. I mean, snowmobiles are used everywhere on the planet now. This is a huge, it's very random though, <laughs> but there's a lot of snow in Canada, so it makes a lot of sense that it would be invented there. Honestly, creating something that would like travel on snow in a way that works is was probably a very difficult task to actually achieve. I suppose it's fitting that a Canadian would invent the snowmobile. Yeah. Joseph Armand Bombardier, a Quebecer, invented the snowmobile, unfortunately, because of a tragedy. During mm. a blizzard, his young son got very sick, and because of all the snow, they couldn't travel to the hospital, and unfortunately, he died. Well, that is a really sad circumstance to be inspired to build this, but inventing it in the now caused everyone in the future to have this device to travel around in case of emergencies and for convenience, so... Either way, it was fantastic to create it in hindsight. Monsieur Bombardier did not want that to happen to anybody else. Yeah. So he invented the snowmobile. Yeah, oh. yeah. And you got people uh, driving him off giant ramps and doing tricks. So <laughs> he probably he probably never could have imagined the uh, fun we would have with these. Fortunately, these days we have things like snow tires and everything. So mm -hmm. getting through a blizzard is not as hard as it was back then. And the snowmobiles become more of a fun recreational thing. Yeah, that's more of what I think of it as. I see them when you go snowboarding or something. You see the staff riding around on these cool things. Number seven, the snowblower. The snowblower, another snow <laughs> invention. Uh, this one, Americans love this one. Uh, this has 
helped a lot of people with the annoyance of snow. Oh my goodness. Speaking of snow, there are two Canadians who are credited with patents for early versions of the snowblower. Oh, I bet they're rich. This thing is so useful. Not having to break your back, uh, shoveling snow for hours. You just whip out your snowblower. Now I'm going to be like, thank you, Canada. And turn <laughs> right as I turn on the snowblower. Robert Carr Harris of New Brunswick is credited with the first patent. And Arthur Sicard of Quebec is credited with the first practical snowblower. Wow. Number eight, the gas mask. Whoa, this is cool. This is like, appears in a lot of pop culture. It's just a cool looking mask. It was hugely important to war and other things like that. But the gas mask is like, something you never think about, but is really an incredible piece of technology. During the First World War, Germans used poison gas against the Allied troops. Yeah. Dr. Clooney McPherson, a Newfoundlander, modified a helmet taken from an enemy prisoner. Using this, he created a gas mask. Wow, and this... Pfft, talk about saving untold amounts of life by creating this thing. And it would be go on to be used forever, up until now. Like, uh, you use gas masks. His efforts saved British, Canadian, and other Dominion lives. Yeah. Number nine, yeah. the Robertson screw. The Robertson screw. I don't think I'm familiar with whatever the Robertson, scr Robertson screw is. That's right, that screw with a little square indent for- Oh, it has a square. I've never seen a screw like this or used one like this. Is this very popular in Canada? Don't you need a certain type of screwdriver to twist this? And what's the advantage of a square? For your drill or your screw to get in there, it was invented by Canadian P.L. Robertson in 1908. And last but Oh no, that's it? What is the Robertson screw? I want to learn about that. Robertson screw. Okay, Google knows what I'm talking about. What are Robertson screws? Exactly, Wood Magazine, I don't know. <laughs> what are they used for? used in the electrical trade for circuit breaker terminals and clamp connectors. Okay, so this seems like very much a trade uh, screw that people who are actually building things and installing things in day-to-day, uh, -day, their day-to-day -day job would have much more of a use for. Maybe that's why I've never interacted with a Robertson screw, but I certainly appreciate the ingenuity here by Canada. And there. It was invented by Canadian P.L. Robertson in 1908. Okay. And last but definitely- Oh, it's like a hundred years old too. Wow. My favorite on the list, number 10, the egg carton. The egg carton. <laughs> wow, this is the best one. This is, I mean, this hasn't saved as many lives as the gas mask or snowmobile or electric wheelchair has helped. But uh, the egg carton, come on. I mean, this is used everywhere. I bet millions of these are created every day all over the world. E they hold your eggs at the grocery store. This is so random. What the heck? I think this one's especially cool to us who are in the news media industry because it was invented by a newspaper editor. That's huh. right, in 1911, British Columbian newspaper editor Joseph Coyle invented the egg carton. What? I love these interesting origin stories, and this one develops from a dispute between a local farmer and a local hotel owner. Be Oh, so it was some guy in the news who created it? Yeah, I want to know, how did he randomly come up with an egg carton? Like, how do you just randomly invent that? Basically, <laughs> this farmer sold eggs to this hotel owner, but when they showed up, they were all cracked. Okay. I'm guessing the hotel owner was kind of like, These eggs are cracked. <laughs> I will not receive these eggs. I want my money back. I'm sure this is exactly how it happened. And the farmer was like, Hey, look, man, it ain't my fault that the eggs got cracked. I wasn't driving the truck. They and they were like, <laughs> this voice he's doing. And they were like, hey, time to invent egg cartons. Maybe you just crack them so you don't have to pay for them. You expect me to fall for that old trick? Yeah. I'm shocked we got on as long as we did without egg cartons. How did you transport them before? I can't imagine a world... Without egg cartons, my goodness, maybe this is the most important invention 
of the 21st century. And it just kind of got messy. I mean, I guess it already had the eggs got broken and that's, that's messy. The editor, <laughs> Mr. Coyle, solved the problem by creating the egg carton, which allowed yeah. the eggs to be transported without jiggling all around and breaking so much. I mean, did he create a mold to create the egg carton and, and put paper mache in it and created it? Or how did he make it? I'd love to know the details of how he made the prototype and all that. So you see, newspapers are the community's best friend. Wink, huh. wink, wink. So there you have it. Ten Canadian inventions. Wow. Okay. That was pretty cool. That was by The Standard News TV. I liked that. I give you a like. Uh, this was, this was really random, uh, but <laughs> don't get me wrong, almost, no, every item on this list is incredibly useful and used all around the world to this day. They're just very, they're just all over the place. A couple of them had to do with snow, uh, maybe that does have some Canadian influence there, but if I take a look at them, time zones, yeah, what the heck? That was a long time ago, and yeah, that turned out being pretty important, didn't it? The wheelchair accessible buses and the electric wheelchair, my god. That's a that's a great one. Um, snowmobile, snowblower, right? This Robertson screw, I don't know. Um, and egg cartons, egg cartons. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty cool. Uh, it's just like, <laughs> you go up to someone, go, you go up to an American, you're like, "Can it, we invented egg cartons. They'd just be like, whoa, hey, back away. No, <laughs> they'd be like, oh, that's cool. That's, that's like, that's like me. I don't know how to feel about it. It's like, that's so incredibly used all over the world. But the very last thing I would have thought was invented in Canada. But that's why I watch videos like this to learn fun, interesting facts just like that. So anyway. If, uh, if you enjoyed watching this video, feel free to give it a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Canada, Canadian culture, things, stuff I've never seen, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.